Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're doing a Bass Flash on this bad boy. This is the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero BTF. Now, this is actually going to be a slightly unusual Bass Flash because generally, when I say about doing a Bass Flash, and people say, should I do it on a bare board? Should I do it on a built system? This is one of those tricky ones where, because this is a BTF board, or Back to the Future, or Back to Front, or however you want to uh, categorize it. This actually is slightly unusual, being that all of the connectivity is actually on the back of the motherboard. So this means, ideally, you want to put it into an actual PC case, ideally without anything connected, other than the things we're going to show you. So yeah, I'm going to be doing this one in a very unusual place, with it basically being face down. So obviously, if you've got anything like RAM or heat sinks attached to your CPU, then you probably want to do this first before you start laying it down because that could make things a little bit more awkward. Now to actually flash the bars on this, pretty straightforward. You can do it from a USB stick. We'll show you exactly how to format the drive and how to get the bars file, how to rename the file and all that kind of good stuff. They've made it very easy. On the back of the IO shield, there is a BIOS flashback button. So it's in a pretty accessible place. That should be a pretty straightforward thing to do. So let's go through the things we're going to need. Obviously motherboard, somewhere to put it on. I would suggest possibly using your motherboard box as a temporary thing. We're going to actually be flipping it up the other way, so don't worry about that. You will need a USB drive, ideally 32 gigabytes or less, so you can format it in the FAT32 file system. You'll also need your power supply, which we've got here, and you'll need two connections from the power supply to the motherboard, one of which is the main 24-pin power connector, which attaches here on the motherboard, and also you'll need one of the 8-pin CPU connectors which attaches to one of the two connectors at the top of the motherboard. So with all that in place and uh, we've got all of our stuff here, let's head over to the computer and we'll get the USB drive formatted and ready and get the BIOS flash installed onto it. Okay, so this is our desktop computer. You will need a computer or access to computer to download these files and also to format your drive because obviously you don't have a working computer. So let's first of all stick the USB drive in. So there is our USB drive. We've actually got some data on it at the moment, but don't worry, it's fine. We're gonna erase the drive in its entirety. So we're going to right click on the drive, we're going to choose format, and we want to make sure that it is the FAT32 file system. Set the allocation size to default, and if there's anything written in the volume label, get rid of that. This will erase the drive in its entirety, so do bear that in mind. When you're happy, click start, and it'll give you a warning saying that all the data will be erased. If you're still happy with that, click on OK. And there we go, there is our drive formatted and ready. So we can close this down now. Next thing to do is to grab the actual BIOS file. So head over to the ASUS website. I'll put a link for this in the video description. So this is the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero BTF. And on the far side, head over to the support tab. In the support section, head over to drivers and utility. And then it will default to drivers and tools. Just click on the BIOS and firmware. Scroll down a little bit, we can see the BIOS which is available. This is the latest BIOS here. So this is dated the 19th of March, 2024. And if you want to, you can see the other versions. There's only actually two versions available for this one, but this one does actually optimize the CEP setting and also improve DDR5 compatibility, which is always something which is handy to have and potentially might be necessary, hence why you're doing a BIOS update. So click on the download and we can choose to save this to our desktop or anywhere else where you can find it nice and easily. I click on save so we can minimize that window we don't need that anymore so there is our BIOS file which is currently in a compressed status so we need to unzip it so right click choose extract all and we'll extract it to the default location so there's our unzip file so we've got two files here the BIOS renamer which we will need to use for the USB BIOS flashback if you're doing this from a working system you just update the BIOS from actually within the BIOS you can use this file here just drag that straight over to your USB stick so we are going to be using the BIOS flashback method, so we want to run BIOS renamer. So we'll double click on that, and it says there the file has been renamed. Press the key to continue, so I'll just press enter. And there we go, we've now got our cap file. So what we can do now is right click on this, and we'll choose cut. We'll go to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. You can drag it or however you want to do it. Make sure the file is actually the right size, so it should be about 32 megabytes in size. This one's 32,772 kilobytes, which is basically 32 megabytes. So that's absolutely fine. So we can actually now extract this drive from the computer and head over to our little test bench setup. 
Okay, so we've got our little test bed set up here. So the first thing we're gonna do, get our USB drive and put it into the appropriate BIOS flashback port. If you look on the IO on the back, you'll see there's one which has a white rectangle around it and it says BIOS on it. So let's go ahead and stick our USB stick into there. Now the next part is actually gonna be slightly unusual and uh, it does fill me with a little bit of dread because this is an extremely expensive motherboard. So what we have to do now is to actually flip this over onto its back side. Now the reason for that is because all of our connectivity is actually on the back of this motherboard. So we have to be really careful how we go about doing this. We need to connect up a couple of connections. So either one of these eight pin EPS connections and also our main 24 pin power connector. We've got our power supply just here to the side. So let's go ahead and connect up the power cables. So there we go, we've got our power cables connected up now. It does look a little bit odd, it really does. So we can turn on the power supply next. So now we've got power to the motherboard. You can see we have got some illumination there. That is for the clear CMOS button. We don't want to use that one. The one just above it is for the BIOS flashback. So just press the button in for about th two or three seconds and wait until the system initializes. So one, two, three, and release. And then you should see the BIOS flashback light illuminate. It'll flash a couple of times until it reads the disc and then it should change speed as you can see there. So now all you need to do is just to be patient, let it do its thing. When it's done, the system will turn itself off and the BIOS LED will extinguish itself. So yeah, just be patient, let it do its thing, and we'll come back when it's finished. So now at the end of the process, the BIOS flashback LED has stopped flashing. The board seems to have turned itself off and back on again. So now we're ready, we can turn it off and continue with the rest of the build and or testing should that be necessary. So that's done, so we can turn off our power supply now. And the light should go off on the back of the motherboard, just keeping on this one here. Might take a while to drain the capacitors. There we go, now that's off. So at which point now, if you're uh, happy, you can disconnect all of your cables, remove your USB flash drive, and continue on with the rest of your build. Ideally, you wanna test the system, put your RAM in, put your CPU in, just make sure that it gets to a bar screen before you start assembling everything in your PC. That choice is entirely up to you. Do it whichever way you feel happier with. But for now, we've done the BIOS update. It's ready to go so we can get on and build the rest of our system, which I'm actually dying to get done. So there you go. That is how to flash the BIOS or update the BIOS on your ROG Maximus Hero BTF. If you've got any comments or questions, stick them in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.